Hi everybody, it is Carolina here from the Oak Bluffs Public Library and it is Saturday evening, five o'clock. It is time for Cooking with Carolina. Sorry, I'm a little late, just a few minutes. And today we have a very exciting show for you. I'm running a little ragged because I've it's just been a busy, busy day. So today we're going to be making three different things. We're making a creamy mushroom soup we are making French toast, and we are making a green smoothie. So we're going to start by making our creamy mushroom soup to get started on that. So I haven't had much time to get out all my accoutrements yet. You'll have to bear with me while I grab everything. And I just got back from the North Tisbury Farm Market to grab my few extra things I needed, like some kale for our smoothie, and spinach for our smoothie, some thyme, mm, I have some extra fancy mushrooms here, these are Bunapi mushrooms. I thought that would give us a little different kind of flavor for our mushroom soup. And then an onion and garlic and sour cream. So let's get started on our soup. The first thing we'll want to do is to slice up some onion. So this is just a yellow onion. And this particular soup we will not be pureeing afterwards. So you do want to think about that when you're dicing up your onion. You want to make your diced pieces the size you like to eat. super small. Okay, now we're going to do four garlic cloves. And there is an exciting aspect of this soup where it has crispy garlic as a garnish, which sounds really tasty to me. So one little trick to make garlic easier to peel, you could always get the pre-peeled garlic, which if you cook a lot, that is handy. But I will take the end where it's come off the stem and kind of crush that. And that makes it easier to remove the peel.
Alright, there's three. They're big pieces of garlic though, so I think I'm going to do three for the moment. And I'm going to get some oil and some butter to put in our pot. So some olive oil. And my butter is somewhere in this chaos. Here. There it is. Hiding. So I'll put about two or three tablespoons of olive oil and then maybe about a tablespoon of butter. Or so. Approximately. And we'll get that heated up. So you do want to use a big pot for this if you have like a Dutch oven or something that's really ideal. I do not. I don't have a Dutch oven. I should get one. We'll heat this up about medium high. And then we can get our mushrooms prepared also to the side. While we're waiting for this to get hot, we'll just to give it a little room on the cutting board so we can start on our garlic. So the garlic, we're going to want to rough chop about three of the cloves if they're, these are really big cloves. So I'm going to use three of those. <laughs> I'm not surprised, Jack. I wouldn't let you use sharp objects either. Dangerous. Sometimes I wonder why they let me. Now I'm actually not a huge fan of using such a big knife for cutting my garlic, so I'm gonna go a size down. Much better. Gotta use the right tool for the job. And if you want, if your garlic is starting to sprout, you can remove that little green bit. It might give it a little better flavor. Okay. Here is popping over here. Pop, pop. So let's get this onion up on in there. Grab a turtle. Turtle. Now you don't need to go too crazy here. You don't need to mince it. This is just sort of a rough chop. Maybe one more sweep here. So we're sauteing our onion over medium heat for about three or four minutes. And 
I'm just going in there and breaking it up a little bit. And these mushrooms are Baby Bella mushrooms, otherwise known as Porcini, I believe. And those are already sliced, so we don't need to do anything with those. But we will take these little Bunapi mushrooms and get those prepared. I did not be before. bits on the bottom I'm cutting off. Now with mushrooms you really don't want to rinse mushrooms in water. That's not the best way to clean them off. You can kind of brush them gently with a clean towel or if they come packaged they're often clean enough. Okay, check on our onion here. Good. It's been about two or three minutes for that. And what else can we get ready here? We have a garlic or salt. We have some rosemary, which I got a little rosemary plant a few weeks ago. Oh, it smells so good. I love it. And I'm excited to have my fresh rosemary. One tablespoon. And I actually got that little bit of thyme also. So I'll combine. I'll use both. So that's not a, a shy amount. A tablespoon is pretty hefty. So I expect this will be very flavorful. Then we can go ahead and add our garlic. Slide that on in. Very good. And we'll cook that for about two minutes now that we've added the garlic. Make sure you're not cooking it too high. You don't want your garlic to brown. Lower the heat to about a medium. Keep an eye on it. rosemary and then we'll just grab a little of this I'll put in more rosemary than thyme but a little combination of them maybe about a teaspoon of thyme take out any big chunky stems Magnificent. Let's give 
our garlic and stir over here. Very good. Unwrap our mushrooms. So I had these mushrooms sitting in my fridge for a few days now, and I knew I needed to use them, so that was how I determined what to make for tonight's show. And uh oh, gotta figure out something for these. And I personally love mushroom soup. Not everybody does. I'm probably the only one that will eat it in my family, but that's okay. More for me. All right, so let's put in our mushrooms now and our mixture of thyme and rosemary. because I added the other kind just for some, just for kicks. And so we'll mix that all around to combine. have any fans of mushroom soup watching? All right. Now, we're going to saute this for about 10 to 12 minutes, stirring occasionally. And this is a very important part of the recipe where you really need to take your time and let the mushrooms cook because that really develops the flavor. So we'll do a little mini cleanup here. And well, that's doing its thing. We will start on the next thing, which, let's see, what should we do next? The smoothie or the French toast? I'm going to say the smoothie because I need a little, uh, I need a cool beverage. I need something refreshing. So, it's a smoothie, so of course we'll get out the nice loud blender. Uh, so, blender. Quick tip, always make sure that it is assembled properly. Even if you think you put it together properly before, just double check and double check that you're nice and tight on the bottom here because what a bummer that would be to have your smoothie leak out the bottom of your blender. So for our smoothie, it is a green protein smoothie. I've never done, I've never had it before, so we'll see how it is. We're going to take two big leaves of kale. I'm not a huge smoothie person, and I'm going to keep it away from my garlic cutting board over here. I'm just going to move it just so I'm not tempted to put anything on there. Okay, so we are going to take our kale and pull it off the stem. Slight adjustment needed. There we go. Much better. There's one. 
and this kale is actually grown at the North Tisbury farm, which is right basically like 200 yards from my house as the crow flies. I have to walk all the way around to get to it, but it's right there, which is very nice, especially in a normal summer. It's wonderful to walk there and grab like some tea and a croissant. Okay, let's check on our mushrooms here. Give them a little stir. Make sure they're sauteing and not simmering. Don't turn it down too low. Okay. Now we need a handful of spinach for our smoothie. It says small handful. I like spinach, so I There's some pretty much a handful. Maybe a little big handful. Flesh of one small avocado. One more. Gotta grab my avocado. I'm a little sad because this would really make good guacamole too, but you know, the sacrifices we make. I do love me some guacamole. Especially with jalapeno. Okay, so there is our flesh of one small avocado. Squeeze it all in there. Always gotta have your dish towel handy for your hands. Now, we have a half a cup of coconut water. And I'm not gonna measure, I'm just gonna guesstimate. But that's close enough to half a cup. Now, three quarters of a cup of almond milk. Now, you do want unsweetened almond milk, which is what I prefer anyway. Let's give a stir. Are looking very very good in here. So three quarters of a cup. And then one date. So dates are a way to add some natural sugar to the smoothie. Give it a great flavor. Now this you need a pitted date. So I have to pit my date because They'll have pits. All right, put that puppy in there. And let's whiz. Now usually <laughs> what I'll do, especially, I would actually really highly recommend this if you make smoothies a lot or do a lot of blending, protect your ears. Cause it's loud.
give you mushrooms and stir. smells very healthy. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's bad. I mean, it tastes fine. It's kind of good, actually. Gross on you. add a banana though and if you like that little banana flavor and that would be just fine it would taste pretty good mm. and you could also add some ice if you like it really cold but it is tasty and I love the color so back to our mushrooms here oh yeah Now that we have sustenance to get us through the rest of the cooking. Okay, right, these mushrooms are looking fantastic. Fantastic. So now, it's been about 10 minutes, I would say. To give them just a little bit longer. Because they're starting to get a little even browned, which I'm sure adds excellent flavor. They've released all their liquids, which you want them to do. And next, what we're going to do is to add some sherry cooking wine. Very important here when you are dealing with cooking wines and things, if you're doing sherry, make sure that your sherry is the cooking wine. If you're doing something like this, not the vinegar, because there is sherry vinegar too, which I think I actually have both, and I have made this mistake before of throwing in sherry, thinking it's the cooking wine, but no, it's the vinegar. Yowzers, you don't want to do that. That does not taste good. Now, if you don't have the sherry cooking wine, you could also add some white wine. Really, whatever wine you have will add the flavor that you're looking for. You could even use red wine if you want. Okay, so let's 
at the cooking sherry. We'll use about a quarter of a cup, which I'll measure this out just to be a little more precise than I usually am. I don't think you really need to measure it out, but sometimes it's fun. Okay. get excited about food <laughs> so we want to turn the heat up it's pretty it's you don't want to turn it all the way up to high but right now what you're doing is cooking off the alcohol in the sherry and just getting that really great flavor so we'll actually cook this for three or four minutes until the mushrooms glisten. Now, while this is doing its thing, kind of adjust things here, put that away, tidy up a bit. We will get out some flour and some stock. You can use veggie stock, you can use chicken stock, you could use beef stock, whichever you like. And then we also have some sour cream. So we'll grab those. Don't go far, you wanna be stirring your mushrooms. All right. Take a sip of your green smoothie. And we're going to want to get a little bowl. <laughs> Thank you, Mohammed. because we're gonna take some of those mushrooms when they're done and put them aside to use as garnish for the soup. Now you'll want about three cups, and I think in a typical container, it's just a little over three cups. It's like three, four, but I'm sure. I'll probably just use the whole thing, because I sometimes I don't use the whole thing, and then I wind up with this little tiny bit of stock left, and that just seems ridiculous, because usually it just goes to waste when it's sitting in there, sitting in the fridge. Okay, so let's get just a little bit of mushroom put to the side. This is entirely optional to do the garnish. But why not? Why go halfway? Go all out. Do it up. Now, we're going to turn the heat back down to a medium, and we will need five tablespoons of flour. This I'm not gonna guesstimate on because I think I'd probably be wrong. So we'll sprinkle that on the mushrooms. This will make for a thicker soup. 
two, three, four, five. Now, we want to be stirring constantly. about one to two minutes. Careful that's hot. Because once you put this flour on, it will stick if you don't stir, it can burn. This is where you really want to be attentive. Two minutes is a lot longer than you think. <laughs> At least for me, I'm always going, going, going. Two minutes seems like an eternity. So you want to make sure you're scraping up all the brown bits from the bottom of your pot. Watch the steam. Steam burns, not good. So here you really want to get, you're kind of like doing a gravy, honestly. toast today. Sorry. This uh, mushroom soup is taking longer than I anticipated. So a wooden spurtle works really well for this. And so by doing it slowly like that, you really made a nice gravy initially, and you won't wind up, like if you poured it all in at once and stirred it, you'd probably wind up with a lot of lumps. And 
So once you stir in that third cup, you want to combine that really well too. And then we'll get this to a gentle simmer. And so we also wanted to make the garlic chips because that sounded really tasty as a garnish. So we'll bring back our garlic cutting board. And there's my garlic. Grab just one or two more cloves. Do have a simmer here. Let me turn it down just a smidge. And so we want to take our three cloves of garlic and we'll be slicing these the long ways. Into slivers. To slice them into slivers long ways, it helps to hold the whole piece together and do your sliver slicing. Sliver slicing. Okay, so we're looking good here. Now what we want to do, and this is an optional, you could actually have your mushroom soup just like it is and have it be done now. Or you can add a little sour cream in there to make it more of a cream of mushroom soup. So we're gonna add about half a cup It's always tempting to use something that's just sitting around to get out the serving you need but remember that some of this will be saved for another time and you don't want to contaminate it. So you can bring about half a cup to a cup of sour cream. And then we want to mix this in thoroughly. Watch for those splashes. You want to fully incorporate that sour cream in. Which that looks pretty good. Then I'm going to take some of my favorite little Malden sea salt flakes, salt it up, salt to taste. I'm actually going to turn it off now because at this point once you put that flour in there it will start to stick to the bottom if it gets too hot and you don't stir constantly. So then there's a little pepper in there. Stir that up. It looks fantastic.
All right, I'm gonna move this over to the side. Grab a little saute pan and a little olive oil. Keep this on a medium heat. About two tablespoons. Seems like kind of a lot. I guess I shouldn't question. We'll get that hot. You might want to get yourself some tongs. which this is a Teflon pan that I'm using, so I'm very particular about my tongs. So I never use metal on a Teflon pan. It will ruin it. And plus it gets little bits of Teflon in your food, which you know, Teflon's bad enough already, but you don't want more in there. Okay. Feels pretty hot. Little sizzly. You can always test it if you want. I always loved to do this when I was a kid. Take just a little bit of water just to make sure it's hot. Woo! Now you want to take your garlic slices and you want to put them in the pan, but don't put them all in as just one heap. You want them all to be single layer. So make sure they're all kind of divided out. Gotta work fast. So this is basically fried garlic when it comes down to it. So get it up in that oil. Sprinkle it with a little salt. sure it's not too hot so it won't cook too fast. Get this lonely guy over here back in there. So as they get golden you'll want to flip them over so the other side gets fried also. So you might have a few Thinny bits in there that cook faster. Keep an eye on those. This is definitely some hot stove action here. And you'll want to run and grab a few paper towels for draining. For when you take it off. If you have any rosemary left, you could always put a little of that in. It cooks very quickly, so get your pieces out before they get too dark. spread them out on your paper towel for proper drainage. I think we caught them just in time. It's kind of like bacon. There's a fine line between being perfectly crispy and being burnt. 
All right, so we have our little crispy garlic chips and we will grab a bowl for our soup. And a ladle. And a spoon. So now we can take a few of the little leftover mushrooms that we put to the side earlier. Take a few of our garlic chippies. And there you have the soup. So this is a cream of mushroom soup. And let's have a taste test. Oh yeah. Okay, for one, the crispy garlic makes it fantastic, but the soup itself is also very tasty and very flavorful. I highly recommend this one, and I will thank you for joining me. I hope you have a great night, and we will see you next week, same time. Bye.